Alright folks, sometimes you need to squeeze into a really really tight landing space or through a narrow enclosure and you wonder how big am I really? And if you're like me and you're playing in 2D rather than VR, depth perception can get tricky. So today is all about a few techniques on how to find out where you can land. So first tip, visual references. If you see this, you've gone too far. But on a more serious note, it's usually quite beneficial to circle around the place where you're going to try and land and maybe even use right control C, the default for opening a door and then making a turn around it using all of that visual space available for you now. Make sure there's no obstructions that could clip your rotor or an uneven slope for your gear or something that would clip your tail. Now the Abris and target points and even the dead link is not going to be that useful. You just can't zoom in to the scale you need to see things properly for this kind of approach. So, first up, I've got the helmet side down. Just because I want to show you where. And I've got the laser on because I want to get a ranging. Because some of these things, yeah, an accurate ranging would help with trying to determine the scale of things. So if I uncage the sight right there, I want to land that spot. I know there's a truck in the way, but I happen to know that my rotors, if they're not spooled down and drooping, they won't impact the truck. I'm just switching it to black hot there so you can see nicely. And now I'm scaling out the tracking gate size. Now this is important. I've laser ranged. It's 500 meters-ish, or at least rounded up. It goes 450 to 550 meters would read as 0.5 on my ranging. And there you can see the ranging tick down as I press laser or lock, basically, with the laser armed. Now the other guide will also be my helmet mounted sight ring itself. And while that is a little subjective to your head moving forward and backward, it's still a fairly decent gauge of your distance. Now I'm switching off auto armor, which I just had on for demonstration purposes, not part of the technique. And as I move forward, and I'm just ranging, and you'll see there it changes from 0.5 to 0.4. And at this point, the tracking gate borders is pretty much the limits of what I can possibly fit into without clipping my rotors. So I'm just going to slow it over just a little, just to refine and check, and it looks pretty much clear. If I'm looking at it that much further as it approaches the 350 meter mark, it just went under it now when it went to 0.3. Now it's not showing that correct picture anymore of what I could possibly land in. Now another good reference from your instruments is essentially the inner ring of your helmet mounted sight. When your ranging, hopefully your laser ranging, crosses from 0.4 to 0.3, the inner ring of your helmet mounted sight is also another way to gauge the boundaries of what you could possibly land in. This is me crazy flying because I'm trying to show something rather than you know, actually doing it smoothly. Also, if you're flying around servers like this, just watch out for ground effect changing. And of course, your, especially if you have altitude hold happening set to red altimeter, it's going to do crazy things over services like this. So. Don't necessarily take this as the smoothest way to land, but as ways to find out if you can land in a narrow and enclosed space. And here it starts getting really slow and careful, like, well, at least to my ability and focus for that second. As I'm trying to avoid landing with a truck, I want my tail right beside it and not settle up too close to one side or the other of these warehouses. It fits, it sits. And as you can see, that's kind of the extreme limit of where I could possibly land. Now this technique also works on moving targets, like here is the handy one. Now landing on the helipad is fairly easy. The shark has a smallish rotor diameter, you know, coaxials. They're often naval based for that exact reason, that they don't have to have that 
tail clearance of the tail rotor versus the main rotor. Now what I do is I laser lock the ship and that way I've got inertial tracking. So when I unlock and then just relays in that area, my is not going left and right struggling to keep up. Which is a you know, nifty and offload some of my attention needs. So I've maxed out the Schwall gate. I'm just checking out that front space, which I figure probably isn't really bad. I mean, it's not marked nearly as such. And outside of just getting a, enough side slip now that I can check my gates in the right angle. I'm going to watch when it goes from 0.5 to 0.4 right there. And that's kind of the limit. So if there's anything obstruction wise within those limits, then I've got an issue and I shouldn't even attempt it. As I said, the space underneath the cranes and the helipad itself, very you know, easily enough to do if you don't have wind or other adverse weather conditions or damage. And now as I approach, when it goes from point 0.4 to point 0.3, in terms of the range, you can see the laser engine coming down there. Yeah, there it goes. Anything within the inner ring of the HMS would also mean, you know, I shouldn't attempt it. There's too many obstructions, at least side to side. Of course, with a helmet-mounted sight, there's a... I'm just putting on the wheel brake there. Uh, I don't have it mapped at the moment and bound to something easily on my hotas, and I don't want to slipping around after I land. Of course, with a helmet-mounted sight, there is some um, room for error in terms of your head movement of your head tracking, move it forwards or backwards. But it is a little more reliable than looking at these canopy struts and the brace for the HUD, the struts around that. That can be a lot more variable depending on your head position and possibly your zoom level as well. Fair amount of side slip, of course, to match the ship's inertia. And I'm not going to pretend this is the smoothest landing, but also you'll find maybe that the ship landings is a bit more bounciness with a supposedly pitching deck. As you can see, a bit of more wiggle room than the alleyway landing, but still fairly tight. Now, if you've got an obstacle that you need to fly over, there's a way to sort of leave a breadcrumb, so to speak, of where that obstacle is. And then since hover mode puts up HUD symbology, a circle, as, long, as well as a square in that circle, typically centered if you actually were hovering, you can offset that little square that appears to the edge of the circle. And then you know you've cleared that obstacle in terms of your tail length and obviously otherwise. So I've put on flight director because I don't want the hover mode fighting and pulling me back that much. And there I see that I've just, just passed the edge of the roof as I was slowly going past on the bottom left edge of my canopy. And I've activated the hover mode and now I just keep pushing ahead until that square touches the edge of the circle. If it was going neatly straight, then of course that square would be right at the bottom of the circle intersecting it. And now I should be clear. So now what I can do is retrim, which then recenters the square and then just turn off flight director so it holds me there in position and now i can use descent mode while i'm in hover mode to get down to four meters and then once i hit four meters because hover mode switches off your ap channels for weird reasons i'll deactivate hover mode and i'll manually descend the last four meters and fine small controls at this point of course. And wheel brakes if you don't center your cyclic back and lower your throttle. And you can see my tail is clear there. Now you can do other combinations of this in terms of uh, maybe having the door open so you have more of a view. You can also hold trim throughout the whole procedure which will completely cancel the effect of the hover mode trying to take you back to the edge of the obstacle. 
And then you just need to hold trim throughout the whole procedure. And then tap hover mode to sort of leave that breadcrumb there when you pass the edge of the last obstacle that might clip into you. And then you release trim once the square sort of gets intersected on the edge of the circle. Which means that you're clear both in terms of a tail and of course since your wing span is a bit less, you know, sideways you are the most slender except for your main rotor itself. And then you would also be clear of that and of course you'd also be clear of the front since your air sensor probe on the front is also just just shy of the rotor disc. And now you'll see I just turn to the side, retrim the square recentered, and now I just have to descend gently. Also note for descent mode of course your power needs to be just just enough that you are holding altitude that it will actually descend for you. One thing to note with landings like this is just because you fit going down doesn't mean it's safe. If you go and play around with a cyclic, it will of course cause feathering and the rotor discs will tilt. If you up the collective, it might cause or probably will cause coning of the rotors, which will change their angles. And especially if we're in a slope, of course, then tilting the rotor disc might make it clip into the slope. So just watch what you do in these conditions. And if you were to shut down, of course, the rotors would start drooping and might then intersect something that you were clear of otherwise. Now when you do this technique of leaving that breadcrumb, just note with the hover mode, it tries to hold your rad alt. So if you were too close to the obstacle when you passed over it, like you saw there, my tail almost clipped the edge of that obstacle. Now, those were kind of the extremes of what I would say that you probably, I mean, someone probably could with their skills land in a tighter space but you probably shouldn't need to. So when in doubt, you know, just use these techniques of, if it's clear of that, and hopefully by quite a wider margin, like this helipad and the handy wind, then by all means, great. That's probably much safer. But now you know the gist of tracking gait. If it's maxed out in size, when it goes from 0.5 to 0.4, if nothing is within that gait, you should be fine to land and similarly with a helmet mounted sight the inner circle of it the inner ring when it goes from 0.4 to 0.3 you should also be clear of trying to land on it of course these methods aren't foolproof you know your ranging may be out the angle you're approaching at may be way higher like i said your head movement or your zoom level you know field of view something may mess with these so you know take it with a grain of there's a chance of randomness and failure in that sense but also in time you won't need these little techniques anymore i mean if you get a sense of scale of how big is a car at what distance um, how big is that ship how big is the standard helipad although they do differ this helipad is significantly smaller than the ones you'll find in a lot of airfields and here you see the epic most smooth landing you've ever seen and barely stop in time and buck back and yeah it's very pretty but you will get a sense of scale for these things and you might not need these techniques anymore now while you're flying over a target like this or close to something you could also have the schwal pointing 80 degrees down and i'll show you in this video soon about how to do that kind of technique for bomb sighting it essentially but at this distance, the schwal gets really awkward since this minimum zoom is times 7. It wasn't really meant for this and trying to sort of spot your landing using it, it will take a bit of getting used to. I normally find more benefit from at this point resetting the schwal so I can get my vector line in the normal navigation mode. Now there are other visual cues you could learn. Like, you know, when the edge of a helipad or an obstruction, you know, the edge of it at the ground, it should intersect this piece of your canopy or airframe. But I'd say that takes practice. Just go test it out, see what works. And hopefully I'll have helped you 
that you just have at least one less moment of ye of little faith. This is Falk. Cheers.